Welcome back everyone, Mariah Monetize here. I am back for a second video today. So I wanted to point out some things that I have seen on Twitter that I think are very important when it comes to trying to decide where Bitcoin is going to go. Is Bitcoin going to break $20,000? So I'm gonna be pulling some information that I have found that I think is really valuable in really putting things into perspective to, for us to figure out, make our own decisions on where we think Bitcoin is going. So Bitcoin did hit just below $20,000 um, while I was sleeping. And now it's currently sitting at uh, 21,334. So here's some things to consider to help you make a decision on where Bitcoin is going next. So a scary amount of multi hundred million dollar Bitcoin and Ethereum positions on lenders like Aave and Maker are in danger of liquidation. If that happens, it starts a price cascade triggering more liquidations. They may post more collateral, but be mentally prepared. So we are poised in a position where a ton of liquidations can start being triggered. And like we've heard about Michael Saylor, a liquidation price of $20,000, but we also know that he has a ton of collateral to post to back that up, okay, to lower that amount. But we also have information, um, what is the name of that uh, uh, hedge fund? So 3AC, which is one of the largest crypto hedge funds, there is rumors out there that they are in trouble. So um, there are companies out there that are crypto related that I'm sure are in trouble that haven't been exposed yet. So what I think is a likely scenario is that we see one, um, basically these are whales in this situation get liquidated, right? That's a bunch of market sell orders. And that just triggers, right? I mean, we have Celsius in the mix, which I believe their current liquidation price is at about $14,000. And there's liquidation prices out there for other big whales, um, whether that's a hedge fund. We don't know exactly what those prices are. So in my opinion, going below 20 is a very scary scenario if you're thinking about the price. I wanna make it very clear that I still fundamentally believe in Bitcoin. And every day when I'm wake, waking up, I'm trying to figure out how I can accumulate more Satoshis. I am super hyper-focused on that. Nothing has fundamentally changed when it comes to Bitcoin. This is all just price, okay? And we have to also consider the fact of the entire economy, right? We're seeing a ton of correlation between Bitcoin and traditional markets. I think more pain is going to be felt. I think Bitcoin is gonna come down and we see more of a pullback when it comes to general markets, okay? So another very important thing to take into consideration, okay? So this was posted by Cointelegraph. 24 hour exchange inflows reached uh, just under 60,000 BTC the largest daily inflow since November 30th of 2018. On that day, exchanges uh, recorded 83,481 BTC of net inflows. But what did the price of Bitcoin do on November 30th of 2018? Okay, so this right here, um, November 30th is this candle right here, okay. And so this right here, Bitcoin dumped 25% after November 30th, okay? That's a pretty big number, but we also need to remember that that was 83,000 Bitcoin, and now we're looking more of a, uh, um, or excuse me, I think I said that wrong. Okay, no, that's a difference of uh, 24, not 14, 24,000 Bitcoin, sorry, I misspoke there. So, um, Obviously, that is a bit of a difference. We can see that Bitcoin fell 25%. Uh, and over how many days? Let's go ahead and see how many days that was. So from November 30th. So that was about a two-week period of time that Bitcoin fell. And then once it hit there, it jumped pretty dramatically. So we have not yet seen capitulation on Bitcoin, in my opinion. I was hoping for a much bigger, stronger bounce off of $20,000. But in my opinion, I think there's a possibility after the interest rates that are announced today, we could see a little bit of a bounce, but I definitely think that it's going to be a dead cat bounce, okay? So that's what I'm kind of predicting there um, with the whole situation of a bunch of Bitcoin flowing onto exchanges. So here's another perspective to kind of look at this situation. Okay, so Bitcoin fell approximately 85% after it hit $20,000 in 2017. 
And, um, you know, this came in in December and this low, if, you know, pulled back 85% or whatever in uh, about 12 to 14 months. Okay. So we know that Bitcoin hit the all time high it was back in November of last year, right? So that's kind of like the time frame that we're looking at there if there are going to be any similarities. Okay. So if we take $69,000 into account, if Bitcoin pulled back 80%, that would take it to about $13,500. Okay. And then what I also wanted to do is uh, take into consideration the current price of Bitcoin. So, um, let's go ahead and just say, uh, about 21 to 47. Okay. And let's say a 25% pullback, which is what I just showed you what happened on November 30th would take it down to about, uh, 15,837. So in that range over there, that's a, that'd be a 25% pullback from 21 and about three. What if we go ahead and put this to about 20,000, the low that we saw today, and it pulls back 25% off of 20,000 that would take it to $15,000. So about a thousand dollars spread between marking it at those two different points. So that's some perspective there as well. So another thing is that uh, miners are moving Bitcoin onto exchanges at the highest rate in seven months. Okay. So it looks like miners are also becoming concerned uh, and looking to sell off more, but we also want to take into consideration that Seven months ago, the price of Bitcoin was very differently. And so to cover costs, they're going to have to send off more Bitcoin to sell to cover their costs. But I don't obviously know exactly um, the internal structure and how miners um, function in a sense. And they all, I'm sure, function completely differently um, when it comes to money management. So those are some things that I wanted to point out to you guys that I think are extremely important in the current market conditions. This feels much different than um, any other market cycle, I would say, um, I feel like more pain is going to be felt. This actually feels more intense, um, compared to other market cycles and negative news that was coming out. But like I said, fundamentally, nothing has changed about Bitcoin. It is always my goal to stack more Satoshis that will never change. So, uh, that's all I have for you on this video. I hope you enjoyed it as always go out there and create a portfolio that you love.